I have been planning to use the Van Arkel de Burr process to grow pure titanium crystal rods for some time. You will find out how this process works in an upcoming video. Anyway, this project requires me to electrically heat a tungsten wire inside a vacuum. At first, I built one-way glass reactors with a tungsten feed-through. But I still have to figure a lot of stuff out, and if the tungsten wire breaks or gets eroded by the reaction, I can throw the whole reaction vessel away and spend another hour to make a new one. Which means my disposable glass reactors were not the way to go. I needed a reaction vessel made out of glass which I can easily open and close again to replace the filament and which can hold a vacuum. For this purpose I had this quartz glass tube with a KF25 flange made in China. KF flanges are widely used in vacuum technology and use an o-ring that is pressed together by a clamp between two flanges. I even have a KF25 vacuum feed-through. However, it closes off the reaction vessel completely and I no longer have a way to apply a vacuum. Using a T or a cross adapter is also not an alternative. The iodine would resublimate in the large interior of the adapter. However, I cannot heat the adapter either, as the metal would otherwise react with the iodine in the reaction vessel. I needed borosilicate glass vacuum feed-throughs that have a KF25 flange. But my glass blowing skills were not sufficient for this. That's why I met with Johan, a glass apparatus builder by profession and glass blower, who has built his own glass blower's paradise in his basement. He agreed to help me with this project and I would like to thank him very much. The best part of my YouTube journey are the people I meet and share knowledge with. Johan of course does not make lab equipment or vacuum feed-throughs in his spare time, but makes artistic objects. Drinking glasses and lampshades for example. And also a lot of gas discharge tubes. I wanted to show you some of these beautiful creations. Check out this beautiful uranium glass which glows green from the UV radiation of the excited gas inside the tube. Or this quartz glass tube, which itself glows faintly blue. He also works UV reactive glass into his creations to get an extra beautiful effect. But now, back to the actual project. Johan starts by heating a tube with a 30mm outer diameter in the middle until he can pull it apart. By the way, he might also be able to help me build a bigger and nicer sodium potassium alloy fountain. If you guys want to see a video about that, let me know in the comments and show Johan some love. Pulling it apart gave us a nice long neck to hold onto and turn the tube. It is important that the thin neck is concentric with the tube so it doesn't wobble when you turn it. Johan then heats the end of the tube to be able to work the glass. To make it easier for you to see what he's doing in the flame, I hold a pair of didymium goggles in front of my camera. These filter the sodium line out of the light. Without these goggles, the sodium flame would be so blindingly bright that you wouldn't be able to see anything. When the end of the glass tube is hot enough, he uses a graphite tool to push the edge out a little while he turns the tube evenly. In between, he uses a graphite plate to flatten the bottom. He also uses it to keep the outer diameter of the flange even. By measuring the flange in between, he keeps track of his progress.
The result is a beautiful flange that provides a smooth and nice bearing surface for the o-ring. It always amazes me how easy something looks when it is done by someone that knows what he is doing. The next step is the vacuum feed-through. 2.4 and 1.6 mm tungsten welding electrodes were used. To be able to hold them better, they were fixed in a special holder. To ensure a vacuum tight connection, the electrodes were heated in the flame until a thin oxide layer formed on the metal. This layer ensures a good connection with the glass. A thin glass tube was then fused around the electrode and a glass bead was attached to it. This bead will later facilitate connecting it to the opening in the flange. Since one would not be able to hold the very short glass tube with a flange, a second suitable glass tube is wrapped with graphite paper and pushed into the flange. This creates an airtight connection that allows you to blow into the glass tube. At the same time, it enables you to hold it without burning yourself. The glass tube is then melted off in the middle so that only a short piece with the flange on one side remains. Thanks to the previously attached glass tube, the shape of the dome can be determined by blowing lightly into the glass tube. By selectively heating a small area and by building up pressure inside the glass with his blowpipe, Johan creates the hole for the electrode. Before fusing the glass bead on the tungsten electrode to the glass on the flange, he slowly preheats the metal to glass seal to prevent it from cracking. He then places the previously made electrodes in these holes and fuses the glass bead to the walls of the flange. This process is repeated for the second electrode. In the last step, he creates a third hole to attach a glass tube to, which I can use to attach my vacuum pump.
Before he lets everything cool down, he heats the glass one last time and aligns the electrodes. I saw that only 20% of my viewers are subscribed, so if you like my content and made it this far into the video, I would appreciate a like and a subscription. Thank you. And of course, a huge thank you to my Patreons. I greatly appreciate your financial support. The result is a KF25 vacuum feed-through made completely out of glass. Sure, it does not have the exact dimensions of a KF25 flange and there are some air bubbles inside the feed-through, but as you will see at the end of the video, it works great. And considering the fact that Johan has never done something like this before, and it was done by hand, I think it came out beautifully. He also made me a KF25 to KF25 adapter with a side tube to attach my vacuum pump. To do this, he melts off the tube and forms a second KF25 flange on the other side. Just a little side note, look at how effortlessly and smoothly he rotates the glass with his left hand. I know, it looks easy, but after trying for a while now, I can assure you, it's not. A lateral tube is then attached in order to be able to connect the vacuum pump. When testing the vacuum feed through, it showed that it can hold the vacuum without any problems, even with the vacuum pump turned off. Here you can see how the wire in the glass tube glows. And here you can see how it burns out for the fourth time in a row. I will go into all the details and problems in another video. The only important thing is, I already broke one of the vacuum feed throughs when I tried to attach a new wire. In case you're wondering, yes. I hate myself for that. But I have a second feed through, with thinner electrodes, but I can still use it for testing. However, I think I will have to buy a spot welder so I don't have to wrap the tungsten wire around the electrodes. That's it so far with today's video. I want to thank Yuan again for his hospitality. I learned a lot and it was a great day. If you are interested in more flameworking content, let me know. Thank you a lot for watching.